Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be learning about the anatomy of the sciatic nerve. To begin with, the sciatic nerve is the thickest nerve in the body. In its upper part, it forms a band that is about 2 cm wide. It begins in the pelvis as you can see right here and it terminates at the superior angle of the popliteal fossa by dividing into the tibial and the common peroneal nerves. Here you can see more clearly that it divides into the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve, also called the common fibula nerve. Now let's look at its origin and root value. The sciatic nerve is the largest branch of the sacral plexus. Its root value is L4, L5, S1, S2 and S3. The sciatic nerve is made up of two parts, that is the tibial part and the common peroneal part as you can see right here. The tibial part is formed by the ventral divisions of the anterior primary rami of L4, L5, S1, S2 and S3 whereas the common peroneal part is formed by the dorsal divisions of the anterior primary rami of L4, L5, S1, S2 and S3. Now, concising the important points that we learnt under the introduction to the sciatic nerve the sciatic nerve is the thickest nerve in the body. In its upper part, it forms a band that is about 2 cm wide. It begins in the pelvis and terminates at the superior angle of the popliteal fossa by dividing into the tibial and common peroneal nerves. Origin and root value. This is the largest branch of the sacral plexus. The root value is L4, L5, S1, S2, S3. It is made up of two parts, that is mainly the tibial part and the common peroneal part. Next, let's look at the course and relations of the sciatic nerve. In the pelvis, the nerve lies in front of the piriformis muscle under the cover of its fascia. As you can see right here, this is the piriformis and the sciatic nerve lies in front of it. In the gluteal region, the sciatic nerve enters the gluteal region through the greater sciatic foramen below the piriformis muscle, as you can see right here. It runs downwards with a slight lateral convexity passing between the ischial tuberosity and the greater trochander, as you can see right here. Looking at the relations of the sciatic nerve in the gluteal region, superficially or posteriorly, it is related to the gluteus maximus muscle. Deep or anteriorly, it is related to five structures. First is the body of the ischium. Here you can see the ischial spine. So first is the body of ischium. Second structure is the tendon of the obturator internus with the gemelli, as you can see right here, the obturator internus with the two gemelli. Third relation is the quadratus femoris muscle that you see right here and the obturator externus muscle. Fourth relation is the capsule of the hip joint and finally the upper transverse fibers of the adductor magnus muscle. Here you can see the adductor magnus muscle. And this is the upper transverse fibers of the adductor magnus muscle. Now medially, the sciatic nerve is related to the inferior gluteal nerve and vessels. Concising the important points under the course and relations of the sciatic nerve in the pelvis and in the gluteal region. The nerve lies in front of the piriformis under the cover of its fascia in the pelvis. In the gluteal region, the sciatic nerve enters the gluteal region through the greater sciatic foramen below the piriformis muscle. It runs downwards with a slight lateral convexity passing between the ischial tuberosity and the greater trochander. These are the important points that we need to mention while writing the answers for the examination. It has the following relations in the gluteal region. That is superficially or posteriorly, the sciatic nerve is covered by the gluteus maximus muscle. The deep or anterior relations include five structures. For the first, it is related to the body of the ischium. Second, the tendon of the obturator internus with the gemelli. The third is the quadratus femoris, the obturator externus, the capsule of the hip joint and the upper transverse fibers of the adductor magnus muscle. Medially, the sciatic nerve is related to the inferior gluteal nerve and vessels. Now, after having looked at the relations of the sciatic nerve in the pelvis and the gluteal region, let's move on to its relations in the thigh. The sciatic nerve enters the back of the thigh at the lower border of the gluteus maximus muscle, as you can see right here. It runs vertically downwards 
up to the superior angle of the popliteal fossa that is at the junction of the upper two thirds and lower one third of the thigh where it terminates by dividing into the tibial and the common peroneal nerve as you can see right here. Now looking at its relations in the thigh, superficially or posteriorly the sciatic nerve is crossed by the long head of the biceps femoris as you can see right here that I mark in blue. Deep or anterior relation is that the sciatic nerve lies on the adductor magnus muscle that is the one that you see right here lying anterior to it. Medially, the sciatic nerve is related to the semimembranosus muscle and the semitendinosus muscle and laterally it is related to the biceps femoris muscle. Now, concising the course and relations of the sciatic nerve in the thigh, the sciatic nerve enters the back of the thigh at the lower border of the gluteus maximus. It runs vertically downwards up to the superior angle of the popliteal fossa that is at the junction of the upper two thirds and lower one third of the thigh where it terminates by dividing into tibial and common peroneal nerves. Looking at its relations in the thigh, the superficial or posteriorly the sciatic nerve is crossed by the long head of the biceps femoris, deep or anteriorly it lies on the adductor magnus muscle, medially it is related to the semimembranosus and the semitendinosus and laterally it is related to the biceps femoris muscle. Moving on to the branches of the sciatic nerve, it gives out articular branches and muscular branches. So the articular branch is mainly to the hip joint that rises in the gluteal region. The muscular branches include the tibial part and the common peroneal part. Now the tibial part of the sciatic nerve supplies the semimembranosus muscle, the semitendinosus muscle, the long head of the biceps femoris muscle right here and the ischial head of the adductor magnus muscle from its medial side. So that is about the tibial part of the muscular branch of the sciatic nerve. Moving on to the common peroneal part, it supplies only the short head of the biceps femoris muscle that you see right here. Concising the points under the branches of the sciatic nerve, it has articular branches and muscular branches. Articular branches is mainly to the hip joint that arise in the gluteal region and the muscular branches include the tibial part and the common peroneal part. The tibial part of the sciatic nerve supplies the semitendinosus muscle, the semimembranosus, long head of the biceps femoris and the ischial head of the adductor magnus muscle from its medial side. The common peroneal part supplies only the short head of the biceps femoris muscle. Now looking at the clinical anatomy related to the sciatic nerve, sciatica is a common condition that we come across in clinical practices. It is mainly the shooting pain across the cutaneous distribution of the sciatic nerve and its terminal branches that is chiefly the common peroneal branch and that is what is known as sciatica. Now in this the pain usually begins in the gluteal region and it radiates along the back of the thigh along the lateral side of the leg to the dorsum of the foot and it is usually due to the compression of one or more nerve roots that forms the sciatic nerve. This may be caused due to disc prolapse. Now the semimembranosus bursa on the medial side may get inflamed and this condition is known as semimembranosus bursitis. This is another clinical scenario related to the clinical anatomy of the sciatic nerve. Concising the important points under the clinical anatomy of the sciatic nerve, shooting pain across the cutaneous distribution of the sciatic nerve and its terminal branches, chiefly the common peroneal, is known as sciatica. The pain usually begins in the gluteal region and it radiates along the back of the thigh and its lateral side of the leg to the dorsum of the foot and it is usually due to compression of one or more nerve roots forming the sciatic nerve and the cause may be due to a disc prolapse. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes of sciatic nerve as well as other notes on anatomy, physiology and other health science subjects, visit my website www.angelinaisaac.com. The link to it is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.